My name's Kenneth Vaughn. I am a, the treasurer and a founding member of the Arlington Athletic Foundation. The Arlington Athletics Foundation was established in 2016 as a 501c3 nonprofit organization formed to recognize and support athletics in Arlington. The foundation's focus is to recognize Arlington's rich athletic history and honor current athletes, coaches, and those who support athletes. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rick Bergen to the Sage to give a blessing over the great meal served by Spring Creek and over our evening. Rick. What an amazing honor it is to be up here to celebrate some really amazing people from sports to business to servant leadership, from helping people in the sporting arena to helping people in the area of life. However, at the beginning of our celebration, we want to remember with heavy hearts the tragic violence that was perpetrated in Uvalde. The author Thomas Kelly has penned that we must walk in this world not aloof and preoccupied, but stained with sorrow's travail. And so this afternoon, before we begin to celebrate, before we begin to honor all those here, let's stop for a moment as we remember the children, the teachers, their families, and in honor of them, let's pause for a moment of silence, if you would. Thank you. If you would bow with me as I pray. Father, how much our hearts and our emotions are intertwined this evening. On the one hand, we celebrate those here in Arlington, while at the same time, we grieve for those in Uvalde. And yet you tell us, Father, that you are a God of comfort and a God of peace. And so as we turn our hearts slowly towards honoring and celebration, we are grateful. Father, we're grateful that we can celebrate a group of individuals, those who have made our community better, through athletics and those who have made our community better by serving. We thank you for all of them. We are grateful for this amazing meal tonight, for the nourishment that it will bring, and we are grateful to you, Father. It is in your name that I pray. Amen. Good evening. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you for the prayer. Really appreciate that. Kind words. I'm Carl Cravens, and I'm excited. It's going to be a fun night. We're going to have a good time. I'm not going to keep you all between the award recipients for much longer than to say some thanks to some people. Um, as Kenneth said, this is our fourth event, but it's the sixth year that uh, since they started the, the thought of creating the foundation to recognize the athletes, the, the, uh, the coaches, the parents, the supporters, and everybody that puts the effort behind the folks to get to stand up here and get the awards, but it takes a village, and we all know that, so thank you all for coming tonight. Um, why am I excited? I'm excited because sports matter. Quite simply, they matter. Look at the room, it's 550 people. They came out to celebrate people that were important in their lives. And it just, it matters. And uh, for that, I'm fortunate, made a big part of my life, and I wouldn't be the person I was today. And I look out around the crowd and the folks that came in, the, the coaches that I had through high school and junior high, and I think half of the coaching staff I had at Arlington High is here tonight. So it's great to see them, and they've uh, they made a big difference in my life. So thank you very much. Um, in fact, one of, the, one of the coaches we'll recognize later, posthumously tonight, is uh, Coach Ritchie. And I know I was in a lot of classes growing up. I read a lot of books. But one thing I always remember was what he told myself and a room full of sweaty 15-year-old boys 35 years ago in the old tiny little JV gym at Arlington High School. Not even the gym, the locker room with wooden lockers. And um, I think it's the same one they built in 1960 probably. But... Eric Kemp, I saw him the night earlier, and I think he was in the room with me, and Coach Ritchie said it was windy, and he said, boys, the wind doesn't blow in my lane. The wind doesn't blow in your lane. And so I always remembered that, and it was just something simple that Coach Ritchie said, and it stuck with me the rest of my life. The wind doesn't blow in my lane. And uh, just those little things about sports that create character, uh, and you remember the rest of your lives, and it makes you a different person. For that, I'm thankful. I think everybody here tonight would agree that uh, we're here to celebrate those folks that have a little more of the spotlight, but the people behind them makes a big difference. Um, I've got a few things that, want, that I want to, uh, a few folks I want to recognize tonight. Thanks for being here. Mayor Jim Ross, I just saw you a while ago. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Past Mayor Jeff Williams and his wife Karen, our Superintendent, Dr. Marcelo Cavazos. Thank you, Marcelo. Our Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Michael Hill. Our Athletic Director, Eric White. Thank you, Eric. I'd also like to extend a thank you and warm welcome to our elected officials tonight. Our current, well, our current school board would be uh, our president, Melody Bell Fowler, uh, Justin Chapa, thank you, Melody, Justin, Sarah McGroughlin, Dr. Aaron Rice, thanks, Aaron, uh, David Wilbanks, and Keisha Mays. Thank you all for being here. As well, our city council, Helen Moise, Raul Gonzalez, Nikki Hunter, Andrew Peel, Rebecca Boxall, and I know I saw Bowie Hogg earlier. You can't miss Bowie. Thank you, Bowie. On behalf of the foundation, we want a, uh, a special thank you to the individuals and corporations that have made tonight happen. I want to give a special thanks to our former AISD coaches, teachers, administrators, and community supporters. I want to especially thank the Athletic College Foundation Advisory Board, as well as the AISD Board and administrators for this, uh, this new location to, to showcase the awards outside. If, don't, if you didn't see it coming in, take a look at both sides of the, show, of the uh, trophy case. Very, very neat. And I think how cool that is when they have an event here and they're milling around waiting for uh, something to do between wrestling matches or basketball games, that they'll walk through those, those halls and see the names and, and some of the history of our athletic uh, achievements over the years. I'd also like to uh, thank Paul Folks with 3DI Design, Dave and Trina Stone, they're always a big supporter. Mark Caffey, thank you, sir, I saw you earlier. Um, we also have Spence, first Spence, thank you very much for the, for the camera work. Tony Guad Guadanalo, the Peach family, Vernon Wells, senior and junior, Kevin White, Kenneth Vaughn, these are the board members, Kevin White, Kenneth Vaughn, Jeff Kemp for all your hard work, Kevin, uh, John Nelson, Jeff Waldrop, Jim Pointer, Jenny Riney, Debbie Peach, uh, Deanna Foster Zhang, and Tracy Winkles. They put in the hard work tonight to make this happen, so thank you all. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you all. We're going to see a quick video, and then I've got a couple things, to, real short things to say, and then we're going we're gonna to get to the awards, so roll the video. When both Arlington and I were very young. It was determined by a majority of our citizens that we would be a city of the first rank. Tom Vandegrift, with, without question in my mind, was the greatest man I ever met. He was the shortstop between Dallas and Fort Worth. He was the guy that brought it together. Generally, we were at war with each other. But here, Dallas, Fort Worth, everybody, agreed on baseball, Major League Baseball. This story of a, of, a, of a man who wouldn't give up, who simply would not take no for an answer, even though it took decades to get it done, he would not stop. And if he hadn't had somebody like that, I don't know what they would have done. And he, more than anybody else before or since, has been able to do that. His vision was so big, he saw things none of the rest of us could see. What you remember about the Rangers are playoff appearances, World Series appearances, a new stadium, three million fans, but it, you really can't put it in perspective or have a true feeling for what it means unless you go back and remember who Tom Vandergriff was and where we started. The first time I met Tom Vandergriff was probably when he was announcing, and he would come in the, in, in the dugout and do a, a post-game interview. What, what, what got me was just his passion for baseball. Arlington can do it! One of the sad moments for me was him going to the last game at Turnpike Stadium because I knew it had meant so much to him. I'm dreading to drive away from the park. That's the hardest part of all. I wanted the Ranger fans to know that but for him it wouldn't have all happened. The human nature tends to forget. You know, we have one shot to make something be impactful, to influence people. The story has to be told. What an honor uh, to have somebody with that vision, that leadership, a sense of community, 
uh, that we all someday hope to live by and, and, and be our guiding light. And like it is for all these coaches and administrators and teachers that set us up for success to get these awards as well as community supporters that allow it to happen. So I'm finished. I'm going to hand this mic over to uh, a voice you'll all recognize, the voice of Friday nights in Arlington and your master of ceremonies tonight for the rest of the evening, Mr. John Nelson. Thanks, John. Thank you, Carl, and welcome again, everyone. I've always kind of reiterate what Carl said, that sports, I've always said sports is a great equalizer. It brings people together and connections that last a lifetime. Our first award tonight is the Heritage Team Award. It honors a team that has brought recognition not only to its school, but to the city of Arlington. Our Heritage Team Award tonight is the 1993 state champion Martin Warriors in baseball. What you're about to see in a few seconds is about 29 years compressed into seven minutes. The 1993 Martin Warrior baseball team accomplished something that year that had never been done in Arlington sports history at the high school level. That is, win a state championship. They had come close in 1990 making it to state, but the 93 team erased all doubt as to who would reign supreme. At season's end, the squad of head coach Terry King ended up with a record of 34-5 and, and were ranked number one in the state of Texas and finished in the top five nationally in the final high school poll. Martin finished second in District 9-5A with a record of 11-3 and, and then proceeded to dust off their playoff opponents one by one. The playoffs. Unable to capture their seventh straight district title, Martin entered the playoffs looking to regain some of that early season magic. The coaches and players had one thing on their minds, making this dream season come true. In the bi-district round, the Warriors took care of Dallas Carter in two games, setting up a showdown with their old nemesis, Duncanville. The Warriors, looking to avenge the 1990 loss in Austin, opted for a one-game playoff, setting the stage for an evening of high drama. Right-handed hitting, Martin Warrior swings and lines one to left center. Extra bases. Here's Sims rounding second. He'll score. We're tied at one and a stand-up double for David Johnson. Tag's got one ear in the radio and both eyes on this game. Lined into right field. David Johnson rounding third. He'll score. It's 2-1 Martin. Number 23 for Ben Greve as the Warriors take the lead. 1 0 pitch is swung on and blooped into the right field. Greve is coming home. Safe. They go to second. It's pretty close and they got, got him. him. Oh, what a big out that is. And Turner at third. And Foster on the mound. The pitch to Garrick. The throw to first, and Martin has knocked off the number one team in the nation, the biggest win ever for head coach Terry King. Having disposed of the top team in the state, Martin avoided a letdown with a two-game sweep of Dallas Skyline in the regional quarterfinals. And the dream continues. Next up, Round Rock Westwood and Martin's only loss of the playoffs, a 4-3 heartbreaker at Round Rock. With their backs against the wall, the Warriors turned in a pair of outstanding pitching performances to take the series two games to one, and the dream continued. One step away from a second trip to the Final Four, Martin knocked off Carrollton Newman Smith 11-2 in game one to set up last Friday's Region 2 clincher. Reeves sends one deep to right and forget about it. This one clears the scoreboard and Ben Reeves with his sixth home run. Ben Reeves with a pump jack to right field. Play Miller, two steps to the left in the outfield. 
This one hit to the right side, playable for Jason Kerrigan moving towards the line. Hey, this one's carrying and it's gone. That one surprised about everyone. It continued to carry away from Kerrigan and Travis Miller with a home run. Playable, right side. It'll be Miller. Newman Smith joining four others who have gone down to Martin pitching and hitting the Warriors, the region two champions. For the Martin Warriors, the dream continues from the state capital in Austin, Texas on Telecable 13 Sports. What had started on February 22nd with a 6-5 win over North Garland ended with history made in Austin, Texas on June 11th. They played their best ball uh, at the most important time of the year, and especially after that Duncanville game, performing at the clutch times, you know. At, uh, every game had a key time where they needed to make the plays and uh, get the key hits, and uh, they came through in the clutch, and uh, they were determined that nothing was going to stop them to be champions. Coach, the championship game with Abilene Cooper. What did you know about Cooper going into that championship game? Well, we knew a little bit about them. We had scouted them a couple of times. They were just a solid team. Guillermo pitched the game of his life. You know, that, that was, he, he probably, he rose up on the biggest stage, you know, at his biggest moment and, uh, and really came through for us. And we had some good timely hits, you know, David Johnson was the MVP of the whole tournament. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, final score was eight to nothing. You know, that's, uh, that pretty much says it all. We dominated them and uh, the kids played fantastic and uh, uh, they deserve all the credit that they got, you know, as being state champion. See how selective Johnson is. Ahead on the count, 3-1. Takes ball four in an RDI. For David Johnson as Brandon Heisler comes home, it is 8-0. Justin Batson hangs down the side. The windup and Foster's 0-2 pitch. There's a new baseball champion in the city of Arlington. They wear black and red. They are the Martin Warriors. So when will it sink in? Will you have a team meeting later in the week and gather everybody and finally realize uh, what's this mean having come close in 1990? Yeah, you know, we'll get together sometime next week and have a little, you know, just a little party, a little team party amongst ourselves, you know, and just talk about it again and relive it again. But, you know, it's really hadn't sunk in yet. You know, it'll sink in probably tonight just when I'm by myself, you know, and I can I can kind of let my guard down and, and let go and say, wow, you know, we did something that uh, it's almost impossible to do. I'd like to invite Mayor Jim Ross to the front and the 1993 Martin Warrior baseball team and the coaching staff and receive your award. There's your state champions from 1993. Our next award is the Impact Award. It uh, is what it says. It's a person who has left a strong impact on the students and athletes through their guidance and their leadership through the years. Tonight, we recognize Coach Jerry Ward. It is my great honor and privilege to present the Arlington Athletics Hall of Honors Impact Award recipient, Mr. Jerry Ward. The Impact Award is given to an individual who has had a positive effect on young people through a lifetime of service. No one meets this criteria more than Jerry Ward. Coach Ward's coaching career spans six decades, beginning in Lancaster, Texas in 1960, until his retirement in 2014. Luckily for us, he spent the majority of that time at Lamar High School here in Arlington. During his time coaching the Vikings, Coach Ward molded and mentored some of the best high school running backs in the state of Texas. However, you did not have to be a standout running back to benefit from coming under his care. Coach Ward's soft-spoken and easygoing demeanor masked the fire of a ferocious competitor who had high expectations for his players on and off the field. His positive attitude and ability to relate to his players made him very popular. His popularity was also due to his genuine concern for his players and his students. Coach Ward taught us 
that the strongest form of motivation is encouragement. Coach Ward's influence inspired me to become a football coach, a position that I held for 14 years. I spent my last nine years coaching at Bowie High School here in Arlington, and I saw Coach Ward often. He was always encouraging me to go back to school and get my master's. I took his advice and decided to enter the realm of administration. As a current AISD administrator, I try to be the same mentor and motivator to, to the students that I service that Coach Ward was to me. And it is my hope that I am doing half as good a job as he did. Coach Ward once told me that he truly felt he was doing the Lord's work. Well, I feel that it was the Lord's work that put us in Coach Ward's path, for we are all better people because of him. And although for over 50 years he taught the intricacies of such a violent and brutal game, the lasting legacy of his teachings are that of kindness, gentleness, and understanding. That is the mark of a true genius. And for those of us who are fortunate enough to come under his tutelage, those lessons will forever remain imprinted on our minds. With the hundreds and hundreds of lives that Coach Ward has touched, he has won this impact award many, many times over. Congratulations, Coach Ward. We thank you, and we love you. Viking fight never dies. Coach Jerry Ward is seated out here and would like to say a few words. Thank you, thank you for this award. I appreciate it. I couldn't have done it without my wife and my son and my daughter. They're very good people. Thank you again. The Chris and Becky Carroll Legends Award is given to a person in the Arlington community who exemplifies grace, character, and a giving spirit. This is someone that over the long term has exhibited a service heart towards community, friends, and family, no matter what the situation or personal cost. Tonight, we honor Miss Tilly Bergen. Well, how exciting to talk about Becky and Chris Carroll Legends Award. And of course, I've got to begin by speaking about Becky and Chris Carroll. What a difference they have made here in Arlington. My goodness, they have given back in so many ways to our nonprofits, our charities, and many of our schools and, and many organizations here to make our community a better place. And then, of course, Spring Creek Barbecue. What a great place for good food and service. And they have given a start to so many of our school children. Uh, there, that many of them, that's their first job. And they learn all about the work ethic and moving forward. Well, tonight, we have the new Chris and Becky Carroll Legends Award winner. And that is Tilly Bergen. And y'all, Tilly needs no introduction, but yet we need to continue to celebrate the work that is going on through her at Mission Arlington. Y'all, God is really using this place to make a difference. So many families are hurting and have needs, and, and Tilly and Mission Arlington are meeting the physical needs and then sharing the gospel with them, making a difference with so many families. You know, meeting the needs of food and clothing, uh, there for furniture, a place to stay, medical needs. But then in addition to that, they care and they show Jesus' love for each and every one that comes through. And then I've got to go back a little bit because many probably do not know that Tilly hired so many great teachers when she worked for AISD. And then not only did she hire great, good teachers, she also mentored them. and and uh, was actually a mother to so many and, and made such a difference here in our school district. And of course, we are blessed with so many teachers uh, here that uh, actually Tilly found and, and brought here. And Tilly would say right now, she said, Jeff, I didn't find them. God sent them my way because she's always ready to give God the credit. The other thing about Tilly that I've got to say, she is an incredible wife and mother. The Bergen family has done so much uh, here for our community. And of course, Bob Bergen, her husband, was a great principal at Arlington High School. And now he is uh, serving as a pastor in one of the Mission Arlington churches and continues to work. And then Jim Bergen, an incredible pastor himself and, 
and helps in so many ways at Mission Arlington. Clark, her grandson, that does so much of the operations. And then Rick Bergen, the chaplain for the Arlington Police Department. Y'all, what an amazing uh, legacy that, that uh, Tilly has here. And the thing that I need to share with you is that when I came in as mayor, one of the great discoveries for me was how many organizations that Mission Arlington teams with to satisfy the needs of families that are in trouble, that need help. You know, we work together here in Arlington. It's that can-do spirit. And Tilly says often that God has chosen Arlington as a special place, a place where He wants the light to shine and for us to do extraordinary things by using His strength. And then, of course, we see it time and time again where the physical needs are met and then Tilly has the opportunity to then share the gospel and the spiritual needs are met. Pretty phenomenal, y'all. And yes, Tilly Bergen is so deserving of the Becky and Chris Carroll Legends Award. And Tilly, congratulations, but most of all, thank you for letting us honor you so that we can honor God and be able to inspire others to do great things here in our community. Thank you, Tilly, and congratulations. Please welcome Tilly Bergen. Thank you, Guinness. I thank you, thank you all for allowing us to be in a community that loves and cares and supports. So all of us, one united under God, what a place to live. I've lived here now 86 years, okay? And I think we're gonna continue a little longer and see, see what God's gonna do even more in a city that dreams, the vision, but it's one life at a time. And so I thank you personally, my family's here, um, and just to enjoy this fellowship together is a, a blessing for me, so thank you. Our next award is the Unsung Hero Award. It recognizes an individual who has positively influenced a program or organization from behind the scenes with a positive attitude, a willingness to help in whatever capacity necessary, and a commitment to excellence. Our Unsung Hero Award tonight goes to Mr. Jay Ryan. Jim Pointer will come up and speak a little bit about Jay Ryan. There are a lot of great volunteers in our city and most of them, by definition, go without being noticed. That's part of that servant uh, ethic that so many volunteers have. But I happen to have known Jay Ryan for over 20 years, and so uh, this person, I want this whole room to know the kinds of things he does uh, for this community because it really the list is long and, and really, frankly, quite incredible. Uh, Jay and his wife, Julie, Go to the First United Methodist Church here in, in Arlington, as do my wife, Peggy, and I. And so we've known Jay from a Christian standpoint, but also if a Sunday school class ever needs a microphone, ever needs some, a website done, um, really almost any kind of technology, the first person they call is Jay Ryan. And that, you take that outside of his faith into the rest of the community, and Jay, on the north side in the, in the Lamar area has got his fingers on just about every nonprofit website in that part of town. Uh, you just have to tell Jay what you need, uh, he'll get it done. In addition to all those projects, he does larger civic projects that you're familiar with. Um, I think I heard you correctly, Julie, that Jay uh, helped the Boys and Girls Club, but with his website that he did for them, raised just from the website, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but a quarter of a million dollars this year just from the website and over $890,000 overall for the Boys and Girls Club of Arlington. So that's the kind of real tangible results that Jay gets. Um, Jay started, Jay was born in Chicago and he started his career uh, under the tutelage of his dad. His dad was the voice of Northwest Univer Northwestern University football in Chicago. And so Jay was kind of born with that DNA. And 
brought it down when he moved down to Arlington to go to work in this area. Uh, he started doing PA work uh, for the Lamar Vikings, both football and basketball. So, you know, again, it's enough to do the football season, and then you immediately flip over and do Tuesday nights and Friday nights, uh, boys and girls uh, basketball. So that's just, you know, he just tireless. So I wanted to stand up here tonight and, and look at, at Jay on behalf of the whole community and say, Jay and Julie, thank you so much for all that you've done for our community and continue to do. We love you. All of this revolves around the other volunteers that I've had over the years that helped me do what I do. And so some of them are here tonight, and uh, some of them are here tonight also. So thank you. Thank you, Jay. Our next award, the Hall of Fame Award. It acknowledges athletes whose accomplishments in the athletic arena have brought credit to the city of Arlington. Our first Hall of Fame honoree is Mr. Don Bodenhammer. Don Bodenhammer threw a lot of touchdown passes and hit a bunch of home runs, and that's about it as far as I can recall. Funny thing, I saw a good many of those touchdowns and home runs, and I can't remember a single one. I do remember that his high school baseball career was almost derailed because the team thought it would be funny to get in the line drop their pants and show the cheerleading squad all the phases of the moon. Happily, his athletic career was not an end in itself. The lessons learned as an athlete served him well the rest of his life. He used the athletic success template, what is it I want, what is the cost, am I willing to pay the price, and at the end of the day, was it worth it, to earn his law degree at St. Mary's University and become an advocate for hundreds of clients over the years. He also dispensed some tough love to straighten out some young people who were losing their way. My son was one of those young people. His life has been firmly grounded in the principles of family, faith, and friends. He has had several life-threatening episodes and maneuvered through those shadows because he understands that every shadow has a light source and if we move toward the light with confidence and hope, we will emerge to claim the promise that Christ is the light of the world and we will never have to walk in darkness. Don has been married to Sandra for 37 years and he'll tell anyone that he outkicked the coverage when he married her. He also has three children and six grandchildren who lead him around like a puppy on a leash. His family extends far beyond his own. Twenty years ago, my mother left specific instructions for her funeral. She wanted her boys to be her pallbearers. Don was one of her boys. As a friend, I have seen Don through the prism of a little boy, teenager, adult, and now as someone who has had far more yesterdays than tomorrows. He has never disappointed. Don threw a lot of touchdown passes and hit a bunch of home runs. His athletic career did not define his life. He was a good steward of his athletic talent and made his teammates better. His life after sports, one of integrity and honesty, grounded in faith and dedicated to family and friends, have made him a champion and worthy of tonight's honor. It is my pleasure to introduce my friend, Don Bodenhammer. First, I'd like to say how honored I am to share this stage with the other inductees. Um, congratulations to all of you. Uh, and Jeff, thank you for the uh, introduction video. Um, you're a good man, a great friend, almost lifelong. And uh, you, some of you probably don't know, but Jeff is the voice of the Arlington Colts home football games. And uh, he has been for the last 30 or so years. Um, he had to fill some pretty big shoes. In fact, the man that this evening is named after, Tom Vandegrift, uh, was, he was the voice of the Colts for years, and uh, you had some pretty big shoes to fill, and you've done an awesome job, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> I accept this Hall of Fame honor, uh, not just for me, but on behalf of all my teammates who 
for three years shared the baseball field and football field with me. Uh, we competed on those fields together. We won and lost together. Uh, without my teammates, nothing could have been accomplished personally. Uh, so we won and lost together, like I said, and I'm putting tonight in the win column uh, for all my teammates, and I'm proud to be one of, one of their teammates. Thank you to each Hall of Fame committee member uh, who voted to recognize me for this honor. I can only imagine the hours that you had to dedicate and spend to put this evening together. What a wonderful venue this is. Uh, it's great, and it's wonderful, and I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, before my teammates, my team was my family, Team Bodenhammer, and I would like to pay homage to my mother, Gwen, my father, uh, Richard, my brother, Ray, my, and my sister, Mary. Um, how many times did all five of us end up at Arlington High School, uh, usually on a Sunday after church, my dad throwing batting practice, my mother, my brother, and my sister shagging in the outfield? They never complain, at least not audibly. Uh, but Ray and Mary are here tonight. My mother and dad have passed away, unfortunately. Mary, Ray, I love you both with all my heart. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> uh, thank you to my high school coaches uh, who worked tirelessly trying to develop all of us into a winning program, baseball and football. John Riddell uh, turned our football program around one of his assistants was Royce Hillman, and he's here tonight, right here. And, uh, and his son, Trey, is one of the honorees tonight. And I remember when Trey was running around on the football field, I think he was seven, eight, nine years old, or maybe younger. But uh, what a great time we all had together. And but a special thanks goes to the best coach slash manager that I ever had at any level of baseball, and that's Eddie Peach. Coach Peach instilled in me a desire to never be satisfied with my game. I can still remember him yelling at me, or maybe just talking to him, and saying, work at your game, you can be better. He always said that, and I can still hear it. Sometimes you cross paths with greatness. Eddie Peach was one of those people that I crossed paths with, and that's why he's already in the Hall, Hall of Honor here. He was a great man. I got to coach uh, Sean, his, one of his sons. Scott, one of his sons, and Debbie are here tonight. And I honor your, your husband and your father. He was a great man. And to all my friends and classmates who took time out of their evenings and night to come and honor me tonight, I appreciate it more than you know. Many, many uh, <clears throat> of you were my prayer warrior, warriors for the last uh, two or three years because I've had some health problems. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for, for that. <clears throat> now, I asked for and received permission um, to, for, well, I almost forgot my wife, Sandra. <laughs> and, and I do want to go home and spend the night at home. So we've been married for 38 years, and she's done all she can do to help me stay above ground for the last two or three years, nursing, nursing me back to health, and I appreciate it. I love you, Sandra, you know that. I have three granddaughters, and, and they're sitting here, Poppy and Foster and Maggie. But the main thing I have is I got two daughters that have always kept me grounded. They said, Dad, We've heard your stories. We know that you've walked to school uphill both ways in, in, in the snow with no shoes on. Yeah, right. Anyway, so they're thinking of me. They've always had my, had my back. They both married Marines, both named Brandon, because I can't ever seem to remember where my glasses are or my phone. So. I, like I said, I asked for and received permission to go into the next thing, which is, I'm going to call it a, pub, a public service announcement. Um, I had a family crisis uh, not involving anybody in this room. And so for two, almost two years, uh, every night, and I'm going to say this in a way because we've got young children here, I got, I got real close with John Daniels, Jack's 
cousin, Jack Daniel's cousin. Every night I would drink that beverage, go to bed, stumble to bed, and get up. Well, <clears throat> look this up on your phone while we're talking while I'm talking. It's called Hol Holiday Heart Syndrome. And and I'll I will keep talking, maybe you can look it up and you'll understand what happened. My heart went into AFib, atrial, atrial fibrillation. I suffered a massive stroke. I almost, almost died. That was an ICU for many days. <clears throat> and my condition was grave, G-R-A-V-E. And let me tell you this, when it's you that's in grave condition, it takes on a whole new meaning. meaning. Anyway, um, I thought I was going to die. Doctors thought I was going to die. They didn't understand why I wasn't already dead. But then things began to change when one of Sandra's sorority, so, excuse me, sorority sisters came from Dallas, and she got up because she was moved by the Lord to come and see me. And she came to my ICU room. She anointed my head in oil. She prayed over me, and things began to change immediately, and I got better. So I promised my Creator, if He would just let me live, I would, excuse me, spread the word of that experience. Instead of the path I took, I should have been on my knees asking for strength and guidance from my Lord and Savior. And I tell you this story because too often we see the tragic way when a loved one who is uh, consumed in the depths of depression meets an early demise as a result of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, or, or suicide. <clears throat> in a nutshell, there's hope and there's help. Seek it out spiritually, professionally, or both. So if, if 10 of you go out of here, and I think it's about 600 people here, if 10 of you go tell 10 other people, and so on and so forth, I think they, I think they call that going viral. And if only one person who hears my story and makes a better decision than I did, that will be an event we can all put in the win column. Thank you for a great evening. Drive safely to your homes, and may God bless you as he has me. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Our next Hall of Fame member of I've known a long time. It is Mr. Trey Hillman. On behalf of our family, I'd like to welcome and thank you for taking time for this special event. Let me first say I'm overwhelmed with pride as I reflect on Trey's many accomplishments. He started his baseball career at Sam Houston High School and was thereafter awarded a scholarship to UTA where he played baseball for four years with many honors and distinctions. This landed a career in professional baseball that has spanned 38 years and 11 championship rings. He considered it his privilege to have been with the likes of the Yankees, the Royals, the Rangers, the Dodgers, the Marlins, and currently the Los Angeles Angels. He's had the opportunity to manage baseball in Japan and Korea, winning both the Nippon World Series in Japan and the Korean Baseball World Series. While Trey has won numerous baseball awards and accolades over the years, it's the things that he's achieved off the field that demonstrate his true character. Trey has lived his life with a reference of the blessings he and his family have been given and has shared with so many people along the way including all of our family. The recognition for which Trey is most proud is that of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Hall of Champions Award given to volunteers who have served above and beyond the call of duty with integrity, service, teamwork, and excellence. As you might guess, the central theme of our family has been baseball, and in fact, Trey's mother, Carolyn, is buried in the cemetery across the street from the field where Trey played baseball growing up. My son's highest priorities in life are God and family, and he has been able to use his baseball career to strengthen those bonds. 
Trey's wife of 31 years, Marie, and their two adult children, TJ and Brianna, and son-in-law, Brett, are the rock-solid foundation of Trey's life. Son, thank you for letting me be a part of this. I want you to know that I'm so proud of what you have achieved and so proud to be your father. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Dad. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll get to you in just a second. Uh, thank you all very much. What a, uh, what a wonderful honor uh, to be here, be back in my hometown. Um, I want to start by reading from God's Word. You know, in the first chapter of James, James uh, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Wow. Man, I've been blessed with a lot of good things. And on the heels of Mr. Don Bodenhammer, that was wonderful. I, I got to hug him and tell him he's one of my childhood heroes. But I see so many familiar faces. And I'm getting off script like I always do. But I got to tell all the coaches and all the former players that had anything to do with Arlington High School when I was a little kid. I'm sorry. I know I was a pain in the butt. I was up there with my dad at work. I loved every minute of it growing up at the field house, but I know I got in y'all's way all the time. And then any opposing coaches through my high school days, uh, I, I was a brat. I, I, I really was, and I apologize if I offended any of you or got in your way. So um, thank you all for uh, all that put this on. I got a, I've got a list that I asked from my friend Jeff uh, about who to thank for this evening. I, I know they've been mentioned, but I think it's worth mentioning them again. Jeff, I got you at the top of the list. I told you earlier I would love to have been able to run the option like you ran it. Um, I studied a lot of film on you. I just couldn't make my feet do what your feet did. Kenneth Vaughn, Jim Pointer, Zane Gober, uh, Kevin White, uh, John Nelson back behind me uh, spent way too much time being very kind to me during my athletic career, especially my days at UTA. Jeff Waldrop, Debbie Peach, uh, what an incredible legacy uh, Mr. Eddie Peach was, and it was, I know my dad's honor, and it was an honor for me to get to meet him uh, and my dad to get to work with Mr. Eddie Peach. And so thank you, Peach family, all that you continue to do, um, Jenny Rain and Tracy Winkles. So thank you all for making this happen. I uh, was born in Amarillo, but I sure am glad that a, a wonderful coach named John Riddell called my dad and said, Bubba, uh, come on, let's, I want you to come coach the Arlington Colts with me. And it's uh, so very kind and nice to have two of John's sons here, David and Brad. Thank y'all for coming. Really appreciate it. We got to grow up uh, together and Brad and David and I were sharing some of our fondest memories growing up, but um, I've just had so many amazing people in my life. At the top of my list growing up is my dad. Uh, he's still my favorite coach and the best coach I've ever had. But I grew up just thinking uh, with a lot of naivety that every kid's dad could teach them everything that they were uh, interested in in athletics, uh, along with being just a tremendous role model. Um, and I, you know, soon realized that wasn't the case. But, Dad, I'm glad that you, you taught me so many things. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be where I am today without, without my dad and without my sweet mom. My sweet mom uh, lost her uh, years ago. But if it hadn't been for my mom, I, this is our 38th year in professional baseball. And if it hadn't been for my mother, it, it's a pretty strong argument that I never would have gotten to be involved in professional baseball. My mother petitioned uh, the uh, general manager, Joe Klein of the Cleveland Indians after the draft, called him up and told him that I was deserving of a professional spot. And thankfully he agreed with her, but she also thought that I was a better shortstop for the Texas Rangers than Bucky Dent. So she, she missed on a couple of things, but I'm very thankful for the love that she blessed me with. And, and she was my number one fan. 
I got two wonderful sisters. I've had lots of comments tonight. Uh, uh, one of my teammates was asking for a pair of scissors to give me a, a trim, and I grew my hair out long. Uh, this is a joke, but I'm going to tell my sisters this. I grew it out long because my sweet sisters used to take me by the head of my hair and give me a tour of the shag carpet in our living area when mom and dad went to the grocery store in the afternoon. So I got the greatest siblings, uh, Sherilyn and Charla. Thank you for all your love uh, and dedication. and. Uh, just just how you treat me and, and how you treat dad and uh, I love you thank you my sister Sherilyn and Charla both were lead on this while I still travel with baseball so thank you for all your hard work and your love um, my sweet wife been together with me for over 32 years she missed the most uh, she missed the most boring part which was me playing uh, she didn't miss a thing with me being an athlete um, but she's been with me for uh, about 34 years, uh, and we got two beautiful children, and she was uh, the single parent the majority of the time with all the coaches in the room. You know what I'm talking about. Um, our, our son, TJ, is 28 years old, and our daughter, Brianna, is 25 years old, and uh, you hope your kids listen to you. Uh, our, our daughter definitely didn't listen to me. I told her her whole life, I said, all baseball men, I said, well, first of all, all men are pigs, because uh, I didn't want her ever dating. And then I told her, baseball men are piggier. And uh, she married one. She's, she's married to a Tampa Bay Ray. So uh, we love him. He's part of our family, and uh, he's uh, he's been a been a wonderful addition to our family, and he's a, he's a God-fearing young man that just loves the game of baseball and loves people. Um, I'm with uh, the Los Angeles Angels now, and I told my wife, you know, as we get closer to retirement, I thought that that was very apropos to join a team that actually had angels as their mascot because uh, my wife truly is an angel, and thank you for all you do, sweetie. I appreciate you. Um, Mr. Tom Vandergriff, I want to tell you a quick story. Mr. Tom Vandergriff, when I was at Sam Houston High School, uh, we got blown out from a hurricane in our summer league tournament playing for Mr. Tommy Cantrell. Uh, and I remember driving back with teammates with uh, Tommy's wife, Sharon. Still stay in touch with Sharon. And uh, we had spent all our money. We didn't have a vehicle uh, when the tournament got scheduled the next uh, weekend, and I went and knocked on Mr. Vandergriff's door, uh, and he gave us his private Suburban for the Sam Houston Texans to load up baseball equipment and players. So if any of the Vandergriff family is here tonight, thank you for your legacy. I got to grow up out at the ballpark uh, when the Rangers came here from the Washington Senators, and I promise I got a lot of a lot of people's way out there too, but getting to grow up out there in the legacy of, uh, of Tom Vandergriff is something that I always hold dear to my heart and in my memories. Carter Junior High, uh, got to saw, see one of my old coaches and Coach Amos and Bob Davis and Lowell Hoover and uh, um, just great people that I got to play for. Uh, high school, I've already mentioned him, but Tommy Cantrell uh, James Hyden, uh, got to see Billy Stewart and his sweet wife tonight. Um, Bill Keith, Don Lewis, David Clyde, Doug Wood, Reuben Tomlin. Man, I look back on it and it just, the memories keep flooding back with all the wonderful people that I've gotten to play for or play with and be around. So um, thank you all. Then I get to stay home and, and go to UTA and uh, get to play for Coach Butch McBroom, who I still stay in touch with, and uh, John Mochek taking over after Coach McBroom had his leg cut off due to cancer, uh, and Mark Medina, grad assistant, and then our summer league coach and our sponsor as well with the Sports Factory and Allen Austin. Um, just tremendous impact and so so very unselfish and giving. Um, 
after getting involved in professional baseball, I got reconnected with UTA, and uh, I just call him Prez, but uh, Jim Spaniolo's here tonight with his sweet wife, Sue. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you for being here. Uh, I have no idea, but he was kind enough to let me be on his advisory board for a couple of years at UTA. He never asked my opinion about anything, but I was on the board. Um, I go back to all the teammates that I've had, whether it was high school, because as, as Don mentioned, Don Bodenhammer mentioned in his speech, it's the teammates uh, that really matter and the, the teams that you were on, and it's, it was the teamwork. I think about guys that I got to play both in high school and collegiately with, and, and Mark Farrar and, and Greg Farnick uh, and John Ford, and then guys that I'd played against in high school that became college teammates, and they were immediately my mentors and took me under their wing in uh, Kenny Rose, who's here this evening, and, uh, and uh, Kirk Culberson, uh, starting second baseman, and I was a runny nose little shortstop my freshman year. Um, guys like that really impacted me. I, I see Robert Chapa back there. Your family impacted me. It's great to see you. I, sorry I haven't hugged your neck, but please give my love to your whole family. Just all the blessings of all the people. Uh, mentors mainly because they grew up over at our house with my older sister. Uh, but uh, Tim Skinner, Drew Perkins, uh, Steve Cunningham, uh, Dallas Roden, Rusty Rogers, those guys, man, they still to this day, dear friends of mine. Uh, several of them are sitting over here at the Sam Houston table. So thank you fellas for uh, loving me growing up, even though I don't think I was that lovable and still being my friend to this day. Uh, you know, Bringing all this to a close, and I apologize for the lengthiness, but I've been blessed with a, a really simple word, both from God and so many more than I named, but that's with grace. And, and the simple definition of grace is things we really don't deserve. So thank you. Thank you for the night. Congratulations to all the honorees and all the previous honorees, and, and may God bless you. Thank you. As Trey said, he's with the Angels now, and he knows talent like no one else. So you might keep an eye on the uh, Angel Farm System in the next couple of years. In listening to some of these stories uh, before tonight, baseball isn't live, but the resemblance keeps coming up. It keeps showing up time and time again. Our last Hall of Fame honoree is Miss Carolyn Ashfall. I'm privileged to be here today to introduce to you for induction into the Arlington ISD Athletic Hall of Honor, Ms. Carolee Asphalt. I had the privilege of meeting Carolee as a sixth grader at Pope Elementary when she joined my elite track club based here in Arlington, where she was a three-time national champion in the long and triple jumps, a two-time national heptathlon runner-up, and a multiple national medalist in the hurdles, 100 and 400 hurdles as well as the long jump, triple jump, and the high jump. Kara Lee was one of those athletes that just stood out, even if not for her athletic talent, because of her uh, endless energy and her beaming smile. She was just someone you just enjoyed being with. And as a coach, one of the things I always enjoyed the most about Kara Lee is how much she earnestly cared about and gave to her teammates. She burst into the ISD scene in the seventh grade as a, at Shackleford Junior High when she won the long jump, triple jump, 100 hurdles, and the high jump setting a city record of five feet four, which I believe still stands to this day. She ended up in her junior high career at Shackleford winning the hurdles, the high jump, long jump, and triple jump all three years, seventh and eighth and ninth grades. Then moving on to Lamar High School, she continued her outstanding career as she won the long jump, the high jump, triple jump, and the 100 meter hurdles her sophomore, junior, and senior years. And in her senior year, the first year that the 300 meter hurdles were added to the girls program, she won the 300 meter hurdles as well. She was a multiple regional finalist and, and medalist 
at a state qualifier in the high jump for Lamar. Carly is one of those people that when she walks into a room, the room just becomes brighter, more joyful, and happy. She's one of those people you just enjoy being around as often as you can. She's just uh, one of the most outstanding young women I have ever had the privilege of knowing and coaching and being able to call as my friend. The only sad part of our relationship is her move to Colorado that we can no longer see each other as often as we used to. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you one more time for an honor well deserved, Miss Carolee Asphalt, the newest inductee into the Arlington ISD Sports Hall of Fame. I'm trying not to get emotional. <laughs> um, this is such an honor to be here tonight. And I just wanted to say, I told Tilly, I just ran around a track. I didn't do amazing things like she did. But I am really honored to be here and to, to share this experience with the other honorees. And congratulations to everyone. You, you deserve it. Um, Trey did a lovely job, so I'm going to say thank you to all the people he listed to keep it briefer, but thank you everyone for the for this honor tonight. Um, I couldn't have done what I did without this community, and I'm so grateful for this community, and I moved away for college and never really came back. My parents moved away, so I, I missed out on all the wonderful community here, so coming back after 12 years haven't been back since my 20th reunion. It's been so overwhelming with nostalgia and showing my 13 year old around has been such a treasure to tell him all the stories um, and running into people. I ran into Ryan Lyons last night by accident. I don't know if you're here tonight. That was such a treat and uh, a couple other people. It's just been so fun to reconnect with this community that was so important to the, my upbringing. So, um, I couldn't have done it without the families and the many parents that were there behind me. I couldn't have done it without this wonderful family that's here, my sister and brother, who were great fans of mine, um, and my niece and her lovely husband. And my, hus my husband couldn't make it for this trip, but he's kept me humble and grounded. <laughs> um, and my son, I'm so glad he could be here. He, he kind of can't believe that his mom did these things. So <laughs> here's the proof. Your mom was an athlete. <laughs> Um, but it has just been such a pleasure. Uh, Ronnie was a huge part of my career, um, and I, he was like another dad to me, and he not only impacted my life, but he also impacted hundreds of kids with track and field, with the Elite Track Club. So he, he's a great person in this community I'm so grateful for, um, and all the parents, but to all the coaches, the best thing that, experience, that happened to me was becoming a coach. I thought running track and trying to make the Olympics was the greatest thing I could ever do. But when I got to coach an athlete and see them achieve their personal best, tears came to my eyes. And I realized that oh, this is where the magic happens, to get to witness other kids doing great things and to be a part of that. So to this day, I, I coach here and there more for casual on the side, but I am uh, just graduated with my master's to become a counselor because every part of my career has been to coach and encourage others to be the best version of themselves, so I'm super excited to get to do that more in the counseling room. Um, but I want to thank you so much for this honor. It is just such a treasure to be here. Um, and if I don't stop talking, I'll start crying. So I just want to say thank you so very much for this great honor and this wonderful, wonderful community. You've done so many things and you continue to do that. So thank you for that. Next on our agenda tonight is the Hall of Honor. It recognizes coaches, teachers, administrators, and city leaders who have gone above and beyond contributing their support of the athletic programs in Arlington. Our first Hall of Honor award goes to Mr. David York. Good evening. It is my privilege tonight to introduce to you one of the 2022 Arlington Hall of Honor recipients, Coach David York. I speak tonight for so many people, former players, coaches, family members, friends, and even many who are no longer with us. Coach York has impacted tens of thousands of people over the course of his 50-year career as a student, player, teacher, and coach, all in the Arlington ISD. 
Coach York was my coach at Gunn Junior High, Bowie High School, and then later I had the privilege of working with him on Eddie Peach's staff at Lamar. Of course, many memories go along with that. Uh, starting off his student teaching at Gunn, uh, he taught me the fine art of cheating at two-on-two uh, -two basketball. Uh, we always were paired up against each other, and he fouled me like crazy, and he would never call a foul. Well, so I learned as you get older, you have to do those things to stay up with, with the younger kids. And, and he, so he helped me out as I became his age and, and got to be where uh, I could keep up with the younger kids. For Coach York, many times you put a person on a pedestal, and, and when you really get to know them and work alongside them every day, they lose their luster, not Coach York. His preparation, work ethic, and knowledge were a few of the traits that separated him from the rest. One example of, of the work ethic I'm talking about, he would always, on a Saturday after we showed film to the kids, he would always exit for 24 hours, he would have six VHS tapes under his arms, and he would have two notepads. He would come back 24 hours later, and he had, he had watched those films probably three or four times each, and both notepads were completely full of notes, game plan, scribble, and that's how he prepared and he never took anybody lightly, and he made sure as his coaches that we never, we never took anybody lightly either. One year we were playing Pascal. Pascal wasn't very good. Sorry for all Pascal alumni that are in, the, uh, in attendance tonight, but, we, but he convinced us that they could move the ball on us, and if we didn't show up to play that they, they could do some damage to us. Well, of course, we prepared like crazy that week, and we beat them 80 to nothing, but it just goes to show that in my eight years at Lamar, we were never beating, beaten by somebody that was inferior to us. He always had us ready to coach, and he always had his, his players ready to play. Uh, that was kind of his, his forte as a coach. He was known, uh, one thing you were going to see with David York defenses, they were called BCBA. I'm not going to tell you what that stands for, but it was BCBA, and they were going to run to the football, they were going to hit you when they got there, and they were going to always be prepared. Coach York is a man of high character and impeccable integrity. He never bought into high school politics and always played the best kids. He coached with an old school style and never compromised his beliefs and expectations. We are honoring him tonight, and tomorrow we will celebrate on the golf course. Please bring your golf clubs, Coach York. One year we had a golf game scheduled, and he forgot to bring his golf clubs. So I'm just telling you, please put those in your truck tonight. Sharing in this honor is his wife of 45 years, Debbie, son Drew, and daughter Heather. It is my great honor to introduce to you my mentor, my coach, my great, great lifetime friend, Coach David Wood. I want to thank Jeff for that, and uh, I got another $5 I'll give you for all the good things you said that I on the script that I wrote for you. So anyway, on the way up here, my granddaughter asked me if I had any kind of speech prepared, and I told her I don't write speeches. So she wrote me one that says, just wing it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm deeply uh, humbled and honored to, to receive this kind of recognition. Uh, Growing up in a town like Arnicken offered me a special place to actually get to know so many wonderful people that, uh, that meant so much in my life. I was in Arnicken for 60 years, went through all the grade schools and high school, and uh, during that time, I was raised by two wonderful parents, my mom, she always taught me that uh, it's more important to care about others than yourself. I had the opportunity, like I said, to be dragged around Arlington by my older brother Charles. He, he would take me and let me uh, play in the games with all the older kids. I uh, got a chance to play against such fine athletes as Don Bodenhammer, Rusty Ward. Uh, never could hardly beat them, but at the same time, they were always kept me working harder. Uh, I remember going to Sam Houston, playing for James Hyden in his first year as head coach. And I always wanted to have my name announced at Memorial Stadium by Mayor Vandegrift. 
And that was a highlight for me because I'd been there so many years as a kid listening to that deep baritone voice and, and just, you know, he could just make you feel good saying your name. Uh, later on, I had an opportunity to be hired by Mayfield Workman. And he, you know, walking it off, he goes, boy, you got a job. And I said, thanks, Co <laughs> Coach Workman. And that's just about how he said it. And uh, so my first uh, high school job was with a great, great mentor, Jerry Griffin. And I actually had played for, for Jerry at, uh, at Sam Houston also. And, and Jerry was a remarkable person, high, high intellect, very high intellect. And he just basically set a tempo for me that, you know, work, work hard, be there early, and, and don't leave, you know, go home too early. Later on, after they closed Bowie, uh, luckily I ended up at Lamar High School with, with Eddie Peach, and, uh, and that name speaks for itself. He was such a uh, wonderful uh, person that taught me so much in, on how to treat people how to handle kids. And uh, so all those things came into to play in, in any success I ever had as a coach. Uh, the biggest thing about you know coaching is, is truthfully the kids. And uh, man, when you're coaching for over 30 years, you, you get to meet thousands of kids from every walks of life. And to see those kids go from little girls, little boys, to good young men, good young women uh, it just makes all the all of it worthwhile and and it's a why it's the greatest profession in the world there, I mean you may make more money somewhere but you're never going to have the memories that coaches have uh, on a daily basis and but anyway it's 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 a privilege to be here uh, my biggest backers being my family, my lovely wife, Debbie, who I didn't forget. I just saved you for last. Uh, my daughter, Heather, my son, Drew. Very, very proud of those two. My grandkids, uh, Avery and Dane. Papa loves you too. And uh, I know. And. And my uh, son-in-law, Anthony, I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, again, it's a big honor. It's a big honor to stand up here. I never thought I'd be recognized for something like this. But uh, before I leave, I need to get a picture. Nobody's going to believe it unless I take a picture of it. So let me get you. I got people still don't believe it. Thank you. That's York. <laughs> Our next Hall of Honor recipient is Mr. Terry King. Motivator, 100% all in, and passion for learning and teaching baseball are the first things that come to my mind when I describe my good friend and colleague, Coach Terry King. During our time together at Martin, it was very evident that he was a special coach devoted to leading the Martin Warriors baseball program not only to reach the playoffs every year, but for the program to reach elite status in the state of Texas. His commitment to bringing excellence to every member of the baseball program was truly remarkable. His passion for his student athletes was outstanding. Here are a few quotes from ex-players regarding Coach King. He got us prepared to take on anyone, including teams that had more talent than us. The best example I can think of was our area playoff matchup against Duncanville in 1993 state playoffs. Duncanville was loaded with talent and we just had to beat them once at our home field. At the time, they were the number one team in the nation. In a one run game late, Duncanville had the bases loaded. Coach King relayed a daylight pickoff play to second base and we executed it perfectly. That one play won us that game, and we were on the way to winning the state as we coasted after that. Not an easy play to execute, but we did it perfectly. Perfect testament to doing the little things better than our opponents and being prepared to win the close ones. Another player commented, Coach King took a great group of senior leaders and combined them with some young talent 
to make up the top team in the state of Texas, questionably, the country. He had us running on all cylinders as a team come playoff time to make one of the best runs ever in the state, including taking down the number one team in the country, Duncanville. Congrats, Coach King. Another former player said Coach King was a tremendous motivator and knew how to get the very best out of his players. He was decisive in his game management and was always anticipating when moves needed to be made in order to give us the best chance at winning. He truly cared about his players and making them successful beyond the baseball field. Coach King's coaching record stands as one of the best in the history of Texas high school baseball. During his 26-year career, he won 523 games. He led the Martin Warriors to 15 straight years in the state playoffs. During his Martin High School career, he averaged 21 wins per season, 13 district championships, 12 by-district championships, 8 area championships, 3 regional championships, 2 trips to the state Final Four, and in 1993, led the Martin Warriors to the 5A State Baseball Championship. He was named District Coach of the Year 10 times, Tarrant County Baseball Coach four times. In 1993, he was named the National Rawlings Coach of the Year. With all the personal honors Coach King has accomplished, he will be the first to give well-deserving gratitude and honor to the talented and dedicated young man he had the pleasure to coach. He kept everything in perspective and always truly cared about each of his players. Throughout more recent years, he has experienced great satisfaction seeing the successes of his past players, whether it was young men that went on to play college ball, professional ball, and some even at the major league level. He has been equally proud of the many players who have gone on to be extremely successful in a variety of careers, and the quality husbands and fathers they have become. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce as one of the new members of the 2020 AISD Hall of Honor, Coach Terry King, Martin High School. Thank you. Wow. Uh, what an honor this is. I never thought this would happen. Uh, 33 years in education and, and, and coaching, and you just try to do the best you can and hopefully impact some lives. And this is, uh, this is beyond, you know, you dream about things, you dream about having successes, but this is, I never dreamed like this. You know, I never dreamed this would happen. So it, it's, it's an honor. And thank you all very much for that. <clears throat> David, unlike you, I'm gonna, say hi to my wife and introduce my wife first so I won't forget, <laughs> okay? <laughs> my wife of uh, going on 28 years is right over here. Just wave your hand, honey, so everybody can see you, okay? Uh, when we married, when we met 28 years ago, she had four daughters. I had one son. Everybody said, are you crazy? She has four daughters already. Well, they've been the blessing and the joy of my life. And uh, they have blessed us, the four girls and my son, with 12 grandchildren. And thank you. And the 13th is on the way. A bunch of those grandkids were scheduled to be here, but two of them play varsity baseball for Alito and they are playing in round four of the playoffs right now. And the last I heard, they were ahead two to one in the bottom of the sixth, so looks good. Four of them are here tonight. Miller, Ellis, Mariah, and TJ. I wanna talk about TJ just for a second because today is his 11th birthday and he chose to be here tonight with me and with you guys instead of at a party somewhere or doing something, you know, 11-year-old fun. <laughs> TJ, stand up, TJ. There he is, he's right over there, he's a little shy. He loves baseball, he loves football. Uh, he's going into the sixth grade next year. 
hopefully one year you may read about him as a baseball player and a football player at Flower Mound Marcus High School. So if you hear about a kid four or five years from now, T.J. Olson, uh, that's him. That's him. He's going to be a big star because he loves the game. I'm standing up here for one reason and one reason only, and that's these guys over here. What they did in 1993, going 34 and 5 in the toughest division, the highest quality division in high school baseball in the great state of Texas was unbelievable. I did nothing great. My toughest job was filling out the lineup card, handing it to the umpires, making sure everything was spelled correctly and I had them in the right position. After that, I just turned it over to them and let them play. And boy, did they play. I remember going to the state tournament when I first, my first, let me say this. My first five years were at Shackleford Junior High. And I've been blessed with a lot of great people and I got to work with a lot of great people and uh, worked under a lot of great people. And one of the greatest principles I ever had was when I first started. And that was Trey's dad, Mr. Hillman, sitting right here. I'll never forget the patience he had because I went in there, I didn't know come here from Sikkim, you know. Your first year teaching and coaching, you don't know what you're doing. You're just kind of going in, grasping the straws. And he was very patient, he was kind, he was understanding, he was firm. And I always remember that we worried, if you went to your teacher's box and there was a little yellow sticking note in there that said, see me at your convenience, R. Hillman. I thought, uh-oh, you don't want to see that. But every time I had to go in there, and I did have to go in there a couple of times, he was very understanding and said, well, coach, maybe we don't want to do that way. Maybe we want to do it this way right here. And so, uh, Mr. Hillman, for that, I always appreciate you, and, and, and you, were, you were the best. And I had a lot of great principals at Martin High School from, from Rick Berry, who was the principal there when he hired me, to Steve Jacoby, who was the principal when we went through high school, I mean, we went through the state championship and the support he gave us, to Laura Jones. Uh, there were a lot of great ones there, and uh, I appreciate them very much. I also have my brother here and my sister here. They've supported me along the way. My brother was a much better athlete than I was. Uh, I was not very good. I tried a lot of things, but wasn't very good at anything. Uh, my sister has supported me all the way, and uh, they're here tonight, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> I can't say enough about Coach Valamides and what he had meant to me in my coaching career. He was, uh, without a doubt, the best assistant coach I've ever worked with. Uh, he, he did a great job of calling, calling pitches and working with the team and calming me down at times and saying, well, you know, back off a little bit, you know, don't yell at him too much, you know, he, <laughs> be, be nice to him. And uh, uh, coach, for that, I appreciate you and everything you did in calling all those pitches. And <clears throat> I always tell the story of it's Duncanville. And if we weren't going to win, if they weren't going to win the state championship, we were one of those teams that night. That was a state championship game right there in the second round. And we get to the last inning and they got a runner on third and there's two outs. Guillermo Foster is pitching after Matt had pitched the first five plus innings. Guillermo came in. <clears throat> Three, two on the hitter. The big hitter is coming up next. There's two outs, and Coach Valamides looked at me and said, well, he said, we got a choice here. We can throw the fastball, and he's probably going to hit it somewhere. Or I can throw the slider, and he's probably going to miss it, swing and miss it, but it's probably going to go in the dirt. And we hope Batson can block it. So I said, kind of passed the buck on this one. I said, I don't care what you call, just strike him out. 
He called the slider. The Duncanville kid missed it. The ball bounced in the dirt. Batson blocked it, picked it up, threw it to first base, and we're on our way the next round and the state championship. So, Coach, for all everything you did for me, I appreciate it. You know, you, you're the best, man. You're the best. To the players, you're obviously the best. You know, you guys are tremendous. Uh, you're great kids. You're not kids anymore, I'm sorry. Okay? You're always kids to me. But, you know, seeing you tonight and the things you've done and the families that you have is just unbelievable. You know, uh, I appreciate you. And to all the guys that couldn't be here, we understand, you know, uh, life gets in the way. And, uh, you know, I got, when I was sitting there, I got a message from uh, uh, our left fielder, Dan Sims, who is up in Michigan, saying uh, congratulations and he wished he could be here and, and say, to say hi to the rest of the guys. Uh, it's, it's, it's just an honor. I want to end by saying, Lou Holtz once said, if you want to be happy for an hour, eat a steak. You want to be happy for a day, play golf. You want to be happy for a week, take a cruise. You want to be happy for a month, buy a car. You want to be happy for a year, win the lottery. You want to be happy for a lifetime, win a championship. And guys, I just wanted to say, you guys have given Coach Valamides and myself and a lot of other people happiness for a lifetime. Thank you very much. Our third of four Hall of Honor recipients is Miss Judy Strickland. When Coach Strickland asked me to make this introduction, I said, with all the athletes you've coached through the years, why me? And she said, well, Spider, we all have nicknames. You've known me the longest, and I've always been proud of you. The simple truth is, if you played for Judy Strickland, you wanted to make her proud. We were pushed to the limit during practice, taught sportsmanship, respect, tradition, and most of all, that girls deserve to have equality in sports. She worked us hard, but in a positive, constructive way that made us want to please her. Winning was fun, and we won most of our games. Judy Strickland was a pioneer of women's sports in our area and involved in a lot of firsts when it came to her career. She grew up in Cleburne, Texas, daughter of the late Betty and Al Strickland. Her father was the piano player for the world-famous Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. Now, how cool is that? Sadly, there were no opportunities for girls to play organized sports at Cleburne High, where she attended. At North Texas University, she played volleyball under her coach and mentor, Nancy Hood. Her dream was to coach high school volleyball, but fate kept pushing her in a different direction. I met her in 1966 as a fourth grader at South Davis Elementary. She was hired there that year, and it was the first year PE was introduced in elementary schools for grades four through six. I couldn't wait to go to PE because she made it fun setting up track meets, field days, organized games, sports we'd never heard of or played, and exercises for a healthy body. I distinctly remember racing her in the 100-yard dash, and she won. She moved on to Bailey Junior High, where she coached half-court basketball and initiated the first intramural program. In 1970, girls were not offered basketball in high school. Judy collected over 200 letters from parents, coaches, and students wanting basketball in high school. She took them to AHS principal, Mr. Crouch, who in turn talked to the athletic director, Coach Workman, who approved it. Mr. Crouch hired her and insisted she be the head coach. The rest is history. Title IX was passed in 1972, the same year Coach Strickland, at the age of 28, was named the head coach of the first 4A Dallas-Fort Worth area basketball program for high school girls at Arlington High. In 1972, only 295,000 girls participated in organized sports. Fast forward to now, where only th over 3.4 million girls are playing high school sports. Title IX made a huge and positive change in girls' sports. 
What an impression Coach Strickland made on us, fighting for equality in respect to facilities, money, and equipment. Our first uniforms were simple green t-shirts and shorts. By the end of our first year, she made sure we had legitimate uniforms. Since it was our first year to have a team, we had games, but were not allowed to participate in district play until the second year. We went seven and one in that first non-district season. 1973 was the first year girls were allowed to play in the Arlington Classic, and thanks to Coach Strickland, we were there. Finally, in 1978, she signed a contract which stated, girls basketball now had the same budget as boys basketball, and her salary was now the same as the boys basketball coach. In 1979, girls basketball transitioned from half court to full court. Judy Strickland had to adjust her players and coaching style to full court. Her records are impressive. As high school coach at Arlington High, 1972 to 1989, her win-loss record was 293 to 177. District record was 150 to 62. She had four district titles, one regional title, one state qualifier. She coached three players who were named to the Texas High School Girls Basketball Coaches All-Star Team and also one state champion golfer. She was named District Coach of the Year several times, and quite impressively, two of her pl players and my teammates, Leah Box and the late Joyce Daughtery, have already been inducted in the AISD Athletic Hall of Fame. Coach Strickland followed her players after graduation, attending many college games and cheering them on. Through the years, she coached it all, basketball, volleyball, track, cross country, and golf. Her parents often attended our games, and I fondly remember our team going to their house on tournament trips and her dad entertaining us on the piano. We were all considered family to them. Memories of the first uh, few years include running meat grinders, running laps for cuss words, one lap per letter, green day, game day pantsuits, green converse, nicknames for all the players, and the song Basketball Jones. Coach Strickland taught us good sportsmanship, the satisfaction of teamwork, the value of friendship, spirit, pride, and tradition. She often made the comment that her blood ran green. We know we were blessed with an amazing coach. There are quite a few of her former players here tonight, and I know I speak for all of them when I say, Coach Strickland, we love you. Thanks for being our coach, mentor, and friend. And kick them Colts. <laughs> I see y'all. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was told to write down my comments and stick to them, but the last time I spoke before a group was in 1991 at my last basketball banquet. And my co-coaches who are here tonight would tell you I talked longer than anybody else did. I got off script very often, so forgive me if I do that tonight. By the way, Trey Hillman, I don't know if you remember, but I kicked you and Reuben out of the recreation center one summer because you brought water balloons and threw them at all, all the younger kids. So, <laughs> yes, he was a brat. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm more than humbled to receive this honor tonight and very grateful to the foundation and especially to the board members who work so hard to put this event together each year. Thank you, Debbie, for such a heartfelt introduction. I wouldn't be standing here tonight before you without the efforts of Joni McCoy and Joyce Daughtery Coulihan, and probably some others I don't know about. I know Joni and Joyce pestered the board mercilessly on my behalf. I'm sad to say we've lost both Joyce and Joni now. It's not lost on me that 50 years ago this year of Title IX became a reality and the doors of opportunity for girls were kicked in, and rightly so. You ladies who played in the 70s paved the way for all those who followed you. You did a great job. Truth is, I just happened to be in the right time, in the right place at the right time. I never played basketball. I grew up in a town that said basketball was any unladylike for girls. So I played volleyball. I don't know why I got the job. <laughs> I know that parents, students, and junior high athletes 
lobbied for girls basketball to be added in high school. When I was hired, I told Coach Workman, the athletic director, that I'd work hard to bring some district titles to Arlington. If you knew Coach Workman, you'll appreciate these. He said, don't worry about that. Just put those little girls on the court and let them have fun. <laughs> and that's the way he talked. Times have changed. He said, we, we, we had fun. We had a lot of fun, probably more than our share sometimes. But within five years, we were playing in the state tournament representing Arlington High in the city of Arlington. Just imagine my luck at being on a coaching staff with Linda Bradham, Joni McCoy, and Glenda Kramer for several years. All three of those fabulous women had an enormous effect on all their players and on me as well. We just lost Joni and Glenda this month, about 10 days apart. But all three of them are here tonight in our hearts. I was honored to have been mentored by many legends in Arlington, Mayfield Workman, James Crouch, Sterling Workman, Linda Bradham, Margie Austin, Gerald Ritchie, James Hyden, jo Joni McCoy, and Dale Archer. That's just some of the greats I learned from. I want to thank Robert Gill, Teresa Poole, and Lisa Rodewalt who are here tonight for being so easy to work with and for being my partners. I, I wrote down mischief, but it came close to being crime. Uh, we're just lucky we weren't arrested. They were tremendous. I suppose every coach says they had the best kids, and I call them my kids too. But I had the best kids and the parents to work with. To you former players of mine, you will each and every one always be my kids even though y'all are, many are your grandparents now, you're still my kids. My kids loved competing. They were dedicated to doing the best they could on and off the court, and boy, were they ever competitive. They tried to win everything, even races to the huddle. You know, they, they wanted to win. I'd like to thank my family, friends, and loved ones for always encouraging me and believing in me. I love all of you so much. Thank you again. I truly feel unworthy, unworthy of this honor. I'm very grateful to everybody that made it possible. And thank you for recognizing Arlington High's place in the history of girls basketball. Thank you. Our final Hall of Honor recipient tonight is Mr. Mike Stovall. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my distinct pleasure to be here tonight and to introduce a great football coach. Mike Stovall uh, is not only a uh, good football coach, but he's a good person. Uh, I call him a good man. He is uh, uh, thoughtful, kind, encouraging, fair, he did things right, and that was his motto, do it right. As a professional, he was the consummate professional, whether he was teaching, coaching, or an administrator. Mike Stovall was always present, doing the right thing, always being prepared, knew what to say in all situations. The consummate professional. As a coach, he was always prepared. Uh, he always brought a, uh, a, an excitement to the practice field. He tried to learn as much as he could about the coaching profession. He studied. He uh, prepared his athletes well. They were always prepared for a football game. He was a little bit opinionated, as I know some of you know. Uh, and one of his great characteristics was he knew the people in the coaching profession. I'm sure that, well, he probably knew more people than Robert Gill did. I know those of you who know Robert Gill know what I'm talking about. 
As a coach, he brought excitement every day. The players look forward to taking the practice field. They look forward to the preparation for games that week. They were excited. They were, they were having fun. And that's the way, if you parents out there were fortunate enough to have your student play for Coach Mike Stoball, then I think you should count yourself uh, fortunate. He was the right man for your kids. Now, as a friend, Mike Stoball was always there. Good times, bad times, he was always there when you needed him. He would always give an encouraging word. He knew what to say. He knew how to handle the situation. But the one thing, thing or one word that probably describes Mike Stoball best is enthusiastic. Uh, enthusiasm was what he exuded. Enthusiasm for the game of football was what he believed in. Enthusiasm was the way he played and the way he coached. In fact, I remember one day on the practice field, I don't know whether it was spring or in the fall, but we had a little segment where our first offense was going against our first defense. During that segment, we had a 10-yard field, small field, and the offense, of course, was trying to get it in. The defense was trying to stop them. I have to tell you that Coach Soval got his crew really ready because they stopped it. They stopped the offense. But then I told him afterwards, I said, you know who the leading tackler was during that, that uh, segment? It was you, Coach Soval. I said, we didn't have a guy to block you. So you were the leading tackler during that segment. It's with great pleasure that I introduce to you my friend, my best friend, John Michael Stovall. Thank you, Coach O'Brien. Appreciate it. Uh, before I get started, let me get, uh, get the uh, uh, announcements out of the way of the family. I'll just do the immediate family. I'm not doing cousins or anything else, but I'm just going to do the immediate family. Uh, my wife, Barbara, my two daughters, Aaron and Ann, my, my uh, son-in-law, Scott Landis, my two of my grandchildren, Annie and Gatlin, my stepson, uh, Cole, his wife, Annie, and, his, and my two grandsons, Holt and Hayes. And I, would on, I want to introduce also, everybody else is doing it, so why don't I do it? Uh, I want to introduce my two principals, two women principals, Jean Richard, her husband, Bill, and Linda Denson. They like to order me around, so I just wanted to introduce them. Um, before we get started, I, I hope I don't offend anybody out here today, but if I do, I've been retired for 10 years from the school district. Oh, excuse me, stop a minute. I forgot my brother was here. My brother, excuse me, my brother, Dr. Barry Stovall and his wife, Karen. Whew, that would have, that have been tough, man. That would have been tough. But I've been retired about 10 years. So uh, if I say something that's offensive, you can't call the superintendent Mar. you can't call my principal, okay? Because they're not gonna be there. Okay? It's not going to happen. The statute of limitations is over, so you can't do a thing about it. Uh, I'm not on social media, so if you don't like what I said, you can put it on there. I won't read it, okay? So do what you want to. Uh, I am deeply honored and humbled. Um, I want to go back to where I started as a, as a coach. Um, I graduated from Abilene Christian College in 1969. Yeah, I'm 75 years old, and it's about my bedtime. I know that. But uh, a long time ago, you'd get a, get, there'd be a flyer that said, uh, so-and-so needs coaches or teachers and whatever, and you would uh, respond to it. And I was from Fort Worth, so I thought, and my father told me Arlington is a great school district. So I applied at Arlington. I talked to the head athletic director, and uh, I talked to John Riddell. And... Uh, I get a job, and you know, when you get a job, they don't tell you anything. They don't tell you what to expect or anything, so I just go, and I have no idea what's, what's gonna happen. I just, I just go, and I just learn from there. Well, I started thinking, today I started thinking, okay, now, how would you describe the job that you had? Well, you're gonna get to work with young people. Sometimes they're endearing, and sometimes they're difficult. You're gonna work with people who, kids who 
sometimes make you feel like you're 10 feet tall and sometimes like you're 10 inches tall. And what are, you, what are your hours going to be? Your hours are non-negotiable. You're going to work whenever they tell you to. You're going to work sometimes at night. You're going to work on Saturdays. You're going to work on Sundays. But that's the kind of job you're going to get. How's it sound so far? Well, and they will pay you for it. Not much. $8,600 a year the first year. That's not a month. That's a year, $8,600. So it doesn't sound it's going to be that great a job. But what are the good things about it? The good things, the people you work with. You get to work with people, coaches, and teachers also, but coaches, you're going to be with coaches that you're going to be, they're going to be your friend the rest of your life. You're going to bond with these people. You're going to love being with these people. I don't know how many of you, how many of you coaches out there, you go to a family, some family get together, a reunion, and you always find who's the coach. Are there any coaches out here I can talk to? Any coaches at all? You want to talk to those people. You want to, you just bond with them. Great group of people. It's the best fraternity there is. Even the guys that you coached against, it, sometimes you thought, well, I don't know about this guy, but you get to know them, they're just like you. Coaches, it's just, just a special breed of, be of people. Um, and how many coaches have done this before? How many coaches can do this sort of thing? Your wife may send you to the store to pick up a couple of things. You forget one or two things. You forget one or two things. Well, but you can remember back in 1978, the score at halftime between you and somebody else. You can remember that sort of thing. And my wife asked me, how do you do that? I said, well, it was important. It was important. That other stuff is not important. And you remember that. And I'm going to tell you something. I mentioned about money. Money. Money can't buy you love, can it? It can't buy you love. And when somebody who you've coached, he tells you he appreciates you. And it may be when he graduates, it may be 5, 10, 15 years down the line, when he tells you, I appreciate you, coach, what you did, what you taught us, that you can't buy that sort of thing, can you? If you can't buy that, that's what money is when you get that sort of kind of acknowledgement. That is the greatest thing in the world. And so, you know, stuff like this is great, but you know, most coaches have already had it, and that is neat when you have that from those kids. And when you get to be in a high school and coach Texas high school football, there's not a bigger rush in the world. I mean, that is a rush. I mean, high school students, I mean, people can say what they want to now, but back a long time ago, you know, so many of them were, they were fun to be around. You know, kids like, wait, they're golden. They're golden. You know, they haven't learned to be, uh, I guess, the bitterness of, the, of growing up of the world that's happened to people. And they're golden. And being around those kids, it keeps you young. It's, you just, I, think it, it, I think it keeps you young. Now, my wife says, you're just immature. And it might be true, too. But it keeps you young being around kids. And it is just a, it is a, it's a fabulous profession to be in. It's, I can't think of anything else I would want to do. And you've heard that saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village also to produce a coach. And I want to think back to some of the people that influenced me. And the first one was my father. To my, for my father, I believe my brother and I, that's who we worship. That's who our idol was. And a little bit about him, he became later a teacher, coach, and then administrator. He was, a, he was an All-American football player at North Texas. He played in the college All-Star game in the Cotton Bowl against the Chicago Bears in 1936. He had letters from the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears to play football for $100 a game at the time. And he thought he was too small, so he joined the Navy. He was in the Navy. He married my mother, and there I am. So he was the biggest influence of I believe he was bigger than life for both of my, both my brother and I, Barry. He was just bigger than life. He was a, and I mentioned about the credentials because, not because I'm bragging or talking about it, because he never said a word about it. Other people told us, 
told us about him, and he never talked about it. And of course, my brother and I, we, we wanted to please him, and we thought, okay, we both want to participate in athletics and so forth, and of course, we never, we never achieved or came close to what he did. But he didn't, it wasn't important to him. He told us, he said, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you play or do anything, but I want you to be a good boy. I think, a good boy, what does that mean? And it takes you a long time to realize what he meant by being a good person. And uh, of course, at the time, when you say being a good boy, um, I would bring home some report cards at elementary school and junior high, and there would be a C in citizenship. And uh, you know, they used to put on, they put what you did wrong, and it was always exercises, control and talking, and uh, does not follow directions. So I know when I got that report card and he got it, that night was gonna be one of those meetings. I'm in the middle, mother's on one side looking disgusted, and then he's talking to me. He said, you know, anybody, anybody can keep their mouth shut. The next time the teacher's talking, count her teeth while she's talking, but do not talk. Don't say a word. So we had a bunch of those. Uh, I had, <laughs> my brother didn't have as many as I did. I had numerous of those gatherings, numerous of those gatherings. And he was, uh, I guess what was so important about him, it's what he taught us, the values he taught us. He always talked about judgment. He said, you don't have to be smart to use good judgment do the right thing. You have good judgment and learn, if you're going to be in schools, you learn to have relationships with the players, with the teachers, the other coaches. You develop relationships. It's all about getting along with people. And this stuck with both of us all our lives. It stuck with both of us all our lives. It, it, was, it was there. It was so important. And it's still, I, I believe that to this day. The next group of people I want to thank when I first came to Arlington High School in 1969, John Riddell was the head coach. You've heard his name a couple of times this, this, this night, tonight. Then there were, there, there were some men there, Royce Hillman, Weldon Wright, Gerald Ritchie, that I paid attention. I was young. I was very young. I paid attention to everything they said, everything they did. And I watched them, and I watched them, and I noticed that they got along great with the kids and the kids loved all of them. They loved them. And they could get the most out of the kids because of the way they treated them. They didn't, they didn't just talk to them on the football field. They were concerned about them as people everywhere else. Uh, Weldon Wright, one of the, I mean, the kids just went all over him and he was a tough coach. He was tough, but he, was, he would talk to the people. He would talk to them and he showed an interest in all of them. And let me tell you something, kids picked up this real quick, they know who cares about them and who doesn't. And they, I mean, I, I've heard this, they'll tell me, the, the teachers that, uh, you know, that this, she did this, she did that, and all that sort of thing. And I said, well, hey, you know, I said, you know, doesn't matter, but I know who they think doesn't care about them. And they picked that up real quick, but those, co those kids aren't, they knew those people cared about them. And I can hear, I can hear right now, John Riddell, It'd be after practice and they'd come in and the first thing we do after practice every day is talk about personnel. Personnel, talk about where everybody belonged. Okay, who plays this position, that position, and who's the best here, there, you know, who's doing well and all that sort of thing. And how many coaches have said this before? I've said it myself for which is wrong. Uh, there may someone say, you know, coach, uh, I don't think this kid's ever gonna play for us. He does not work hard in practice. He doesn't listen. And, you know, they would all jump in. I feel the same way and all that. Coach Riddell, he would, uh, he would say, no, wait a minute. Somebody loves this kid. Somebody loves him. And find a way to motivate him. Find a way to do it. And uh, I was thinking the same thing myself. This guy, is, he's just not going to play because he just, he's not, he doesn't have those qualities for, you know, you just work qualities, practice qualities. And I guarantee you, I saw in two years, I know there were about four different kids that everybody thought would never play, and they end up being tremendous contributors to the football team. And it just it made me think, okay, you know, you never, you never, you know, all coaches, 
you know, all coaches out here, you like those guys that you tell them one thing and they just get after it right there and they do what you want them to and everything, no matter what you tell them. There are other kids, they don't do that sort of thing, do they? You don't know their background. You don't know where they come from. And I, I can tell you this, the NFL is full of guys that in high school and college, they were problems and somebody found a way to get them in the right direction. And that always, that was always, I thought, you know, that's perfect. That's perfect. You need to remember that sort of thing because, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we want to make it easier on ourselves and just coach the guys that are simple. It's not always simple, is it? It's not always simple. It's just, it's not going to be that way. And Coach Riddell was, uh, he was, he was excellent. He was excellent that way. I didn't want to let him down. And one time, it was, uh, I was the young guy, so they sent me on all the errands and everything else. We were in the playoffs, in the area playoffs against Odessa Permian. And a long time ago, they, you know, when the scouts would be someplace, they would, they, would, uh, they would just exchange films there. Well, we were going to get another film. They were sending it by bus. And so after practice on Monday, Coach Riddell sent me over to the bus station in Fort Worth to pick up a film. And I went in there, okay, I'm, I'm here to pick up that film for Arlington High School from Odessa. He said, oh, I have it right here. He said, let me go get your, uh, go get the ticket and how, how much it is. I felt in my pocket, I didn't have any money on me, any money. There's that film. Do you think I'm going to go back and say, hey, coach, I didn't have any money? The guy walked out. I jumped over the desk right there, grabbed the film, and ran out the bus station, just running and hoping, okay, hopefully nobody saw me. I went back and told Coach Dell about it, and he went back the next day and paid him. Yeah, that guy just took off, didn't he? But I, there was no way I was going to go back and say, hey, I don't have that. I don't have, I don't have that thing. I don't have it at all. The, uh, <laughs> the next person I want to thank is my mentor and good friend, Coach O'Brien. Coach O'Brien, he allowed me to coach. He allowed me to make my mistakes. And he was always there for me. He, he, was, he, he, didn't, he, he let people coach. He didn't force them to do anything. He tried to lead them in the right direction. And two things about Coach O'Brien. Coach O'Brien always used to tell us, you got to be a salesman. you be a salesman. And you, you know, you've got to sell it to people. Sell it whether they're in their off-season, their practice, whatever they're doing. You sell this to them. And... Uh, one day during the week, you know, one of those Mondays or Tuesdays that are just trying to do everything, and uh, he'd always do it, do it in the field, and he'd come in and say, hey, uh, you didn't sell much insurance today, did you? And I said, no, it's just one of those days, Coach. He'd you know, hear me down there screaming and hollering and acting like a maniac, and I always remember that, though. You know, go out. Everything we do, we're always trying to sell, sell to the kids, sell to the kids. And Coach Brian used to get on the coach and says, don't come in here after practice and sit down, get a drink, go out there and talk to those players. Talk to every one of them you, that, that, that you coach. And if a kid had a bad day, you make sure that you tell him that to just shake it off. That's, everybody has bad, bad days. If you got on to him, you just come back the next day and have a good day. That's all you do. Very, very positive. Very positive. Always positive always, uh, it was always upbeat, always upbeat. Uh, the next group I'll mention is the players. And first of all, I just want to thank the players for allowing me to coach them, allowing me to, uh, you know, to, to let me work them hard and, you know, believe what I was saying and all that. I was around a bunch of great kids, uh, great kids. They, um, you know, and I would, oh, I'd sell them so much. Oh, oh, God. Some, you know, I feel bad about it now. Sometimes such stuff I'd tell them. I'd say, hey, you know, there's nobody that can love you like your mother. Nobody loves you like your mother. A mother's love, you, you, it's unbelievable what a mother's love is. But let me tell you something. And don't tell your mother this, that I said this. But your mother's not your friend. I'm your friend. Your mother won't make you better. I will make you better. Your mother will not make you climb rope. She will not make you run stands. She will not make you run wind sprints. She will not push you. Your mother, if you have 99 or 100 
oh, honey, you want to stay home today? No, no. 9900, that's not sick. That's just you're a little, little uncomfortable, right? So just come on and go. Come on. Learn to work every day. Be there every day and work hard every day, no matter if you feel it or not. But come and work hard every day. Uh, the players, they're all different. They're all different. You know, some of them, some of them you just tell them, okay, uh, uh, you know when the game is? You know what time the bus leaves? Are you getting enough to eat? If not, I'll go buy you a hamburger or something. I know that's illegal. You can't do that sort of thing. Then there are other kids. It's a little different for them. It's, it's a little different. It's a little slower. <laughs> no names now. Um, we, were have, we were playing a district ball game, a important district ball game, and during warm-ups, our starting defensive end gets, gets hurt. He gets hurt. And so the kids that's going to go in for him hadn't played much at all. He hadn't played much. And uh, we were about 20, 15 minutes from kickoff. And I said, okay, sit down. Let, let's go over. This is in the 70s when everybody was running the option. So he had option reads. It's called assignment football. Everybody has an assignment. And I, I, I went over. I said, okay, now, your defensive end, when the tight end blocks down, who do you have on the option? He gave me the wrong answer. Oh, and then I, I corrected him. I said, okay, when the, when the tight end blocks one-on-one, who do you have? He gave me the wrong answer. I corrected him. I said, when the tight end releases outside, who do you have? He said, uh, he gave me the wrong answer. And I corrected him. I wasn't upset yet. I went through a second time. He got every answer wrong. And I'm sitting here, and I'm, and I'm just about to scream but then I thought, okay, no, I can't let him see that I'm upset. I, I didn't want him to see that I'm upset, but I'm sitting here, and I'm asking these questions, and I'm sitting here just, I'm making noises. I'm gritting my teeth and everything else. He got every one of them wrong. Finally, I just realized, hey, just play hard. You're going to be okay, and just go. And you just can't do that. You can't, you, you can't sometimes you just got to, you know, be smart about it and just, hey, don't confuse them, because when you confuse them, they're not going to play hard at all. So just go ahead and play. But um, the players, you know, I, I would tell them, I, I, I try and give them just simple guidelines to play by. Two things, and I heard this, um, heard this from a guy at SMU one time. He said, you know, don't worry about winning or losing. Play hard and with great enthusiasm. And if you do that, everything takes care of itself. If you play hard and you play with enthusiasm, everything usually takes care of itself. You don't worry about winning and losing. Just do that. And you say, well, play hard. Not everybody, you know, not everybody plays hard all the time. People take plays off. And I try to tell kids, I say, you know, during, this, during a ball game, there's going to be five or six big plays in this game. You don't know when they're coming. But if you're not going hard during that time, somebody else is going to make, make the play, maybe on the other team. So... Um, thank you, players. I mean, good night. I, I appreciate you being with me and, and you know, taking it in. And uh, so many of these guys are, I mean, they're successful now. I, I see them, and, I mean, my gosh, some of them are rich. And I'm thinking, uh, man, maybe one of these guys will take me in one of these days. I don't know. But uh, they're very successful, very, and that's, that is so great to see those guys successful and still tell you, hey, coach, I appreciate everything you all did. And one thing we did that was so neat, at the, the, it was the Thursday before the last, last regular season game, the coaches would get together with all the seniors, and we would talk to them about what to expect the next, the later years in life. And I'd always tell them the same thing. I said, you know, I hope that you have learned a good work ethic from us. And I've heard, I hope you've learned that when things go bad, you still keep going. You keep going and you learn that it's going to change. It's not going to stay the same. Just keep going. And I said, you know, all of you, things aren't going to be good for you all the time. You can have, you can have a, uh, problems in finances your family life, in your physical life, medical life, you can have, you're going to have problems, but how do you deal with them? How do you deal with them? You come back and you, you come back strong every time and you do not let it get you down. 
You don't give in to it. It's attitude. Attitude is everything. Thank you so much. We've uh, only got a few awards left. The Everyday Hero Award is one who does extraordinary things every day out of kindness of their hearts with a passion to make a difference for the better. Those people try to leave things better than they found it. Dino was not just a loving pet and constant companion for Darren Behealer. I just knew he was special. They were inseparable for 10 years at home and on the front lines. Oh. Green Bray is still walking this earth because of that dog, because of that animal. Starting with the former Special Forces Communications Sergeant, the pair was deployed on three tours of duty to Iraq and Afghanistan. The Belgian Malinois was airborne with the Special Forces, jumping from planes with the healer into combat zones, clearing the way for troops, detecting bombs and other dangers. You know, how many people's lives did that save? Hundreds, soldiers, civilians, <laughs> all those things, there's, you know, 25, 30 of guys like me, they're still around because of what he did. Dino retired in 2013 after getting hurt. He came home to Arlington with the healer, sometimes training, but often playing and relaxing until two weeks ago. Just started throwing up, couldn't keep anything down, and just wasn't acting himself. Yeah. The 15-year-old had contracted the bacterial infection Lepto. A closer look revealed small tumors on his spleen. Dino lost movement in a leg. Last night with me, I knew. I was like, can't let him go out like this, so. Let him go Friday morning. Before the final goodbye, one more mission. Showered, shaved, put on all my military gear. A gesture of honor and gratitude. Put a flag over him. From one soldier to another. Just wanted him to feel like he was going to the combat one more time. So I wore everything I had. In Arlington, Maria Guerrero, NBC5. Good evening, my name is Margaret Behealer and I have the honor of introducing my youngest son, Darren Behealer. Darren played every sport imaginable at Duff, Bailey, Arlington High, and Pantego Christian Academy, and then went on to graduate from Mary Harden Baylor where he also played football. During these years, we were blessed to have so many men speak into Darren's life. The late Jake Hill and his wife Sue were always so gracious to include Darren in their family events, sporting events, and trips. There were also so many coaches and teachers from elementary through college who spoke into his life and helped him on his journey. After 9-11, Darren felt a call to go into the military. He went into the Army with a heart to become a Green Beret. His whole 15-year career was one of a Green Beret. He was with the 10th Special Forces Group, Airborne. Darren had more than eight deployments during his career. In 2019, he started working on the K-9 tactical team with Dino. Darren agreed to partner with Dino, a Belgian Malinois, even though other handlers had turned him down. Darren knew there was something special about Dino. They were deployed on three tours of duty to Iraq and Afghanistan. Dino joined the Green Berets in halo operations, jumping from planes with Darren into combat zones, clearing the way for troops, and detecting possible roadside bombs and other dangers. Dino saved hundreds of soldiers and civilians. There are 25 to 30 Green Berets who are still alive today because of Dino. He retired in 2013 after being injured in Afghanistan. Darren brought him home to retire to the good life. He passed away in March of 2019. One of the many honorable things Darren accomplished while a Green Beret was being selected by the task force commander to lead a high profile security detail that returned the former Pakistani Prime Minister's rescued son to Pakistani authorities without issue. After this deployment, Darren saw it was time to hang up his boots and move back to Texas. He had seen enough war. Since then, he's been employed by Luxar Staffing here in Arlington. Since a young age, Darren's favorite Bible verse has been Philippians 4.13. 
I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We've seen the truth of this verse throughout Darren's life, and the best is yet to come. Thank you, Arlington Athletic Association, for honoring Darren with this award. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Um, before I start, I wanted to do something. Um, are, there, are there more veterans in this audience? If, if there are, would you stand up, please? Thank you. Thank you. Outstanding. Um, well, with my award, um, I have to thank my family. That's uh, the biggest and most important thing for, uh, for most, most soldiers, if, if you know any or, or have them in your family. So um, my mother, my rock, um, the person I look up to, um, people would ask me, where'd you get your tenacity? Well, my mother, they say, well, your mother? I said, well, yeah, she's a single mother raising two kids. I said, if, if one job didn't do it, she got another one. So she worked two jobs. And when that didn't do it, she'd take a third job. It's tenacity. I said, it may not be the tenacity that people think during sports, but it's tenacity nonetheless. Mom, thank you. I love you. Um, my brother, Scott, um, I mean, I became the man I am today because of him. Um, and it's hard to explain because... Growing up, he was four years older. He hit puberty at seven years old and um, just beat me at everything. I never won a game, ever, not ever, ever, ever. I think it was a game of pickup basketball when we were 21 and 25. I finally beat him and he elbowed me in the back of the head. And that was a whole different ball game at that point. But anyways, um, just nothing would have happened the way it did without... Uh, my brother being who he was with me throughout my entire, you know, childhood and, and early adult years. So, Scott, thank you. I love you, brother. Um, there's a table in the back um, of people that I consider family. I'm, some people call them friends, but they're, they're family. Um, Eric Torres, his wife, Crystal. Crystal, I love you, too. Um, Julie Hill, Jake Hill, um, John Hill, and his wife, Jen Lee. Um, I've, known these, I've known these folks for... 40 years almost of, of my 45 years or 46 years, however you want to look at it. Um, and it's, a, it's another hard thing to explain when you go through the same, and, you know, same things that we all went through together growing up in childhood and, and early, early adulthood and then moved on to, you know, some people went to college, some people started jobs, some people went coaching, but something always brought us back. But um, the biggest thing I have to say to them is, is thank you for your support. They, they were there for me for, you know, all, 10 deployments. Um, the constant was those guys always supporting me, always sending me stuff, always letting me know, hey, Darren, we know you're over there doing the tough stuff, uh, but we're here for you whenever, uh, you know, whenever you come home and please come home. So, guys, I love you. Thanks for uh, everything you've done. It's incredible. Um, I've got two other people over here I need to thank. Um, Jeff Shin and David Branscombe. Uh, close dear friends of mine from uh, UMHB. We were teammates, roommates together in college. Those are two guys I consider family as well. Um, you know, you go a year or two without talking to these guys and you show back up and, and you run into, a, run into them at a golf scramble and it's like, you know, you picked up where, where, where you left off. So guys, thanks for coming, love you both. Um, Jerry and Mark, thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate you guys more than you know. Um, those are, that's my, my cousins um, on my mom's side. Um, Tom Eastman, another important person um, in Dino's life. Uh, so when I came home and retired Dino, I left him with my mom when I would go deploy back to Afghanistan or wherever else I was going. Um, when my mom couldn't do it or she had something, you know, uh, pressing where, you know, Florida called her and she needed to go on vacation, then Tom would come over and, and dog sit, and he was, he was just instrumental in helping uh, keep Dino sane, because as you can imagine, a, a military working dog in, in the civilian sector is not always the easiest thing to control, so Tom, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let me think here. Lastly, um, Coach Kemp. Where's Coach Kemp at? Is he in here somewhere? 
Um, he said something to me when I was, when I was in ninth grade. Um, everybody else had, had already started growing, and I was still a, a, a runt. I don't know if y'all saw those pictures, but there was a ninth grade picture, and it was pretty ridiculous. Um, I didn't realize I was that small. Anyways, um, Coach Kemp pulled me aside after he saw that I had a couple of bad practices, and I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm just down about this thing. When Coach Kemp put his arm around me, he said, B, you're going to do big things, big things. And it stuck with me the, the, you know, the rest of my life. Every time I went into something, I, I was like, well, there was a march, mo, those were my marching orders from Coach Kemp. You're going to do big things. You've got to do big things. So, um, Coach Kemp, thank you for, uh, for being there for me uh, during those young years. Um, let me think. Did I leave anybody out? Please, God, Mom, help me. Did I leave anybody out? My nephew. My nephew, Trayson. Buddy, I didn't see you there. Thanks for moving over. Um, yes, he had the option of not coming. He chose to come to support his uncle. So, Trayson, thanks, buddy. I love you. Thank you all. I want to introduce you to a very fine gentleman. His name is Alan Averett. He was a man who was always engaged. And today we're going to honor his story and share his heart to live life to the fullest and to look out for those who you surround yourself with. We are joined right now by Alan's daughter, Becky Phillips, as well as Vanessa Bingham, a friend of the family. And I'm going to try not to get emotional here because uh, we connected in a very different way. Um, I got an email from you, Vanessa, right? Back in yes. March, March of last year. Tell us about that. Well, I knew Mr. Averett was dying. And we went down to see him, and um, Becky was like, okay, take any of these books that you want. And Mr. Avery saw your book, and it was a Kindness Matters book. And he says, you can have all those books, but I want that one back. And I decided at that point in time that I was going to see if I could get him an autographed copy. And that's why I reached out to you. And, um, and then it was New Year's when you contacted me, and that's how this all started. And so I have to, again, apologize to you, which I did, and I apologize to Becky, because when I found out that uh, Mr. Averett had died just two months after you sent that email, and I decided it was my New Year's resolution to catch up on all my emails, I realized that I made oh. a tragic mistake, and I did not respond. And it was because I was so busy, I was getting ready to move to Chicago for this job, and it was good things that I was distracted by, good chaos. But yeah. it was just such a message that I wanted to share that too many times in our life, we don't pay attention, whether it's good things or pressure. And so, Becky, I reached out to you to apologize for having not met your father, who has been described as one of the most amazing men on the planet. He was 94 years young when he passed away. And this was your first Christmas, not being able to celebrate it with your dad. Can you just describe him to us for, for us all, for the audience? Dad loved and he cared about everybody. There was no one. And after dad passed, we got so, we found out that dad gives so many donations to anybody and everybody but all the mail. He was loved by everyone that knew him from the young to the old he give out suckers at mm -hmm. all the football games or anywhere he was at Becky, and they were always green we have to talk to you about the football games because he was so devoted he went to every single arlington high school football game since 1948 is that right yes um uh, let me, let, I don't want to interrupt you, Becky, school. but you know what? I have a surprise for you that you don't even know about. We actually have Coach Peach from Arlington High School with 100 students right now to cheer on your dad in front of the beautiful mural inside of Arlington High School in honor of his life. He is the only Arlington High School um, person, I guess non-employee, right, Coach Peach, to be remembered and memorialized in a building named in his honor there in Arlington. Can you come to your screen? Come to your screen. Just tell us one thing about him that was so unique. We have only have about 30 seconds. Adrian, Mr. Averitt was the best of all of us. Uh, we have honored him with the Allen Averitt Fieldhouse here at Arlington High School, named after him. Uh, but I can tell you that I got a birthday card, an anniversary card, Christmas gifts from my family every year from him on time. I once asked him, how many Christmas gifts do you give out to kids across the country? And he said 75. Uh, what an amazing man. 
Uh, he was the best of all of us here. He meant everything to this coaching staff and to our students and our players. And we love him so much and so thankful for you for doing this story today. Well, I want to honor you. I want to honor, of course, Mr. A. All those kids there know that they had an adopted granddaddy on the field every single game for decades. Thank you to Becky for joining us. And thank you to Vanessa for emailing me so that I can be a part of reminding us all, stay connected, stay engaged, check in with your seniors, and make sure to just stay present. We'll see you tomorrow. Our 2022 AISD Award, the UIL Class 6A State Champion Boys Wrestling, the 120-pound division, Sean Rencars. <laughs> the UIL 6A State Champion Boys Wrestling, the 106-pound division, Isaac Ervalo. <laughs> Our AISD Administrator of the Year from Arlington High, Stacy Humble. Our AISD Junior High Transformational Coach of the Year from Workman, Davion Lockett, basketball, football, and track. We have three co junior high female coaches of the year. The first from Workman, Jordan Bradford. Also, Nikki Odom from Workman, and Brunetta Davis Dennis from Workman. Our AISD Junior High Male Coach of the Year from Barnett, Aaron Dozier. We have Co-Athletic Trainers of the Year from Seguin, Brian Benitez, and from Bowie, Michelle Espinosa. Our high school transformational coach of the year, give it up for Anthony Chris of Sam Houston. Our assistant coach of the year from Bowie, Shalina McGrudy. Our top academic athlete of the year from Lamar, Blake Ford. Our Joni McCoy Female Athlete of the Year from Sam Houston, Madison Bussey. Our Eddie Peach AISD Coach of the Year from Arlington High, Andrea Scott. And our Mayfield Workman Male Athlete of the Year from Bowie, Devon Campbell. (laughs) 
We are just about done. I would like to invite to the stage Scott Peach, who has a special presentation. Um, truly amazing night. I'd like to say this. I woke up to stories. Most kids grew up with Peter Pan and those stories. Uh, I grew up in my home to stories of the great Don Bodenhammer and the Tecklenburgs and the J.J. Joes. Don, congratulations for your honor tonight. Jerry Ward, uh, my dad loved you, man. And you were his parrot. Anytime I walked across the field after a game, my dad said, hey, son, awesome job. You, it was awesome. And he always said that when, when he won the game. And then Jerry Ward would come across afterwards and say, Scott, awesome job, great job. And then the one year, a couple years later, when we actually beat Lamar, uh, my dad came across and said, dirtiest football team I've ever seen. I'm so disappointed in you, son. And then right after that, here came Jerry Ward, and he said, I'm so disappointed in you, dirtiest football team I've ever seen. Y'all were connected at the hip, and he loved you, and I'm so proud of you, man. And Terry King, what an honor it was to work for you, man. So glad that you're back. I could tell 100,000 stories of Terry King. My favorite is when we went to play golf together, and I was hitting the dog out of my three wood. It was beautiful. And he said, can I try that? And I said, you bet. And Terry Green grabbed my club, and he swung, and he hit a rock. And uh, the club head flew into the woods. And he looked at it, and he said, that's a hell of a three eight wood. And he gave it back to me. Um, amazing man. I'm so proud of you, man. So proud of your team to be honored tonight. If we would at this time, Peach Elementary, if you'd please stand and be recognized. All the people from Peach Elementary, please stand. So this is truly amazing. First of all, we have 16 faculty members from Peach. Young, please keep standing. We want, to, we want to recognize you tonight. Aisha Ramos, amazing job with what you're doing. We're so grateful for you, for what you do. Yes. For the school, Eddie and Debbie Peach in Arlington. But this is what's amazing. I'm about to introduce to you um, a video, but also our Eddie Peach Award winners. To do that, um, we wanted to continue the legacy of my father. And the way to do that was to pick the very best student athletes the city of Arlington had to offer. We raised money for that, and we're going to give away tonight six $1,000 scholarships to the best of the best in Arlington. Here's the cool story about Peach Elementary. In the name of Eddie and Debbie Peach, they have pennies for Peach for two weeks every year with their kids. They raised $1,500 in pennies this year for the Eddie Peach Scholarship. Thank you all so much for that. Truly incredible. We'd like to show a video very quickly of Peach. Well, Mrs. Peach, on behalf of the Student Council and the Peach um, Viking family, students, um, faculty, parents, we would like to give you our contribution to the Eddie Peach Athletic Scholarship of $1,500. Wow, that is amazing. So as we continue the legacy of Eddie Peach, we have six amazing winners this year, the very best of the best the city of Arlington has. If they'll please, if all of you will please come to the stage and start this way, and I will introduce you at this time. First of all, to receive a $1,000 check from Arlington High School, Monroe Adams. The second one, from Bowie High School, Mackenzie Arsenault. Our third recipient, from Lamar High School, Ellie Rather. From Martin High School, Grace Reddick. Our fifth recipient from Sam Houston High School, Monica Rios. And finally, 
from Sam Houston High School, Justin Tone. Uh, to finish the night, coming to the stage for our closing prayer, Dr. Jim Bergen. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord, I can't help but be touched tonight by uh, each recipient that's come, by their humility, by the gratitude they've expressed in the sense that they've not done anything on their own, but with your help and with the help of this community and their family and friends, and we thank you for them. How, God, we thank you for this community and the way um, we work together and for a sense of your presence in our midst we want to honor you with everything we have. And so we ask you in the days ahead for you to stay with us and for us to keep working together. Um, and we give you thanks in everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for attending tonight, and we'll see you next year.